There we go. We are we are live now. We got we got the notification on our end. So welcome everybody. It is it is not Monday. You're not seeing things. You didn't lose an, a day along with like the hour of sleep that we lost this weekend. Oh, um, but it is it is Tuesday nights with Ben Stowe, and Yay. we are doing it on on everybody's on everybody's favorite day. I I had to I had to wear mine, my 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 super pie. I like that my super pie. I like that. Um, it, it, you know, it's one of those things. I, I we talked about it at school today, and one of the other math teachers sent me a meme. And, and I don't know if you've seen like the one where it's like the girls like walking down the street like this, and there's a guy playing a trumpet like right behind her head, and above the little girl it says, "Everybody else," and above the trumpet are math teachers on Pi Day. So like we're just gonna ram it down your throat. And I I I take some offense to that. I take some offense to that. But, I have but does the shoe fit? But I played drums. I, I did too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to be associated with the brass instrument. We're drummers. No. Yeah. Well, no, I, I gotta watch myself because my son plays low brass. But no, I yeah. I so, so unrelated but funny as heck. Uh, you know, of course, Animal Effects also has a full musical instrument division, uh, and mm -hmm. we sell supplies and accessories for uh brass and woodwinds and that sort of thing too. Uh and uh Kat, who everybody loves, our marketing director. Uh, many people have, you know, many of our viewers have probably met Kat at a trade show, but everybody loves Kat, you know. Kat asked our showroom manager, uh, who's a fantastic musician himself, 20 years touring, you know, whatever. Anyway, she asked him if he had French horn mutes uh, for her niece. And I'm thinking, yeah, just chuck it. <laughs> I just <laughs> muted all the way. <laughs> like, like, anyway, sorry, French horn players. The purpose of their hand? It's a yeah. French horn, like yeah, they just stick it in a little hands? further. Yeah, just jam yeah. that thing in there. Yeah, I don't know. Right. I mean, not yeah. to not to take you out away from a sale, but you know, sounds like a hand would work just as fine for a French horn or a trash can. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and I, I and know. we lost it. We lost like all that one viewer that that happened to play the French one horn French horn player is really cheesed off right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I, I'm I don't sorry. know. I was actually, I was, uh, I don't know about you as a drummer, but I was in a, I was in a drum and bugle corps and um, we used to joke about, you know, what's 500 woodwinds on the bottom of the ocean, a good start, you know? So <laughs> I, I love woodwinds though. I, I do. And anyway, it's just things we say when we're not smart enough to play them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say like, I, I was one of those drummers who at least during high school and marching band, I was in the pit because I knew the keys from playing piano. So I could, I was on xylophone. I was on marimba. Like I was on oh, sure. And I got the lucky thing. Like everybody's out, you know, in the middle of summer learning drill and I'm inside in the air conditioning, just learning my music. And that's the only thing. I, I loved do. marching. I actually, there's nothing. I, I really, you know, marching sideways at 160 beats per minute with a snare or a set of quads. I really enjoyed that. Actually. I was, I very much loved field shows. So I don't know why, but yeah, something wrong with me. Then again, I, you know, I worked a lot of ag jobs as a kid. So I was out, you know, in the fields and the heat, you know, picking rocks or kicking rocks or detasseling corn or, you know, whatever, you know, but walking beans. But yeah, no, I, 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 I think from a, from a drummer standpoint, there's, there's two really important things, right? If you can't play good, play loud. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and always, always win the race to the end of the song. Absolutely. Very Absolutely. Important. If you're not first you're last that's right yeah who wants to be the first loser yeah <laughs> i'm not rushing you just need to keep up uh, exactly exactly we're we set the beat right that's how that goes Is i it? tried to convince my uh band director that i didn't i didn't really win the argument you know and, and here's a throwback i you know I, i've got this this uh note in the corner of our live stream that says you know this is being live streamed and it basically says you know you should be careful what you say so i maybe should take heed of that advice but now nah, why start now you know, we had a really kind of uh, regimental old school band director when I moved uh, and, uh, you know, I moved away from sort of a hip, cool band director where we had these awesome field shows and I moved to this uh, very regimented band director who, you know, uh, just didn't align with, you know, my line of thinking, I guess. And he was very, very against uh, hot sticks. Remember those hot sticks, the neon drumsticks, neon colored Oh, drumsticks? yeah. He was very against those. So not only did I have hot sticks, I had a mismatched pair of different colors. And it drove him bananas. And oh, I'm sure. Great. He just drove him bonkers. 
And I wonder if we had the same band director because uh, I ours kind of we were allowed, like we were allowed to tape our sticks, right? Because mm-hmm. you're beating them up, you have to tape them. If, if not, right. they're they fall apart in a day. But yeah, it was white. Yeah, that yeah. was the color of the sticks, white. Well, and 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 I particularly enjoyed this in like symphonic band, you know, where you know we're all dressed nice and playing symphonic works, and he would try to. St- hide and steal every pair he could find that I had, but I always, I always kept a spare. I mean, I would, I would, even when in the days when I was living on my own, you know, I'd uh, moved out and ended up in the homeless shelter and that whole story, uh, you know, I would skip a meal to buy neon drumsticks. That's how, that's how committed I was to, you know, to, to this thing. But, you know, as bringing back all these fond memories have nothing to do with the show tonight, but I, you know, uh, the orchestra also needed a, a percussionist and they came over to the band room and they said, we need a percussionist for orchestra. And kind of all of us were like, not it, you know, and uh, one of the other percussionists, I was, I was actually the only male percussionist in, in that band. Uh, so one of the uh, uh, female percussionists leaned over and was like, you know, it's like, literally a hundred percent girls in orchestra you would be the only guy in the room and i'm like hmm. i think she knew i needed all the help i can get so so i i said you know what i'll do it actually i'll i'll i'll, I'll be your percussionist for orchestra still never got a date but whatever you know so what, I mean, what's, what's that you know it's not the last man on earth it's the last man in in the uh in the orchestra room yeah and apparently it didn't matter like apparently yeah i mean it might as well be the last man on earth so whatever i'm like whatever yeah but remember there's a garth brooks song and i know you recently did some country stuff but the garth brooks song unanswered prayers because you have a wonderful wife you have a wonderful family thankfully because you never got a date with any of those orchestra people yeah let's go with that <laughs> i'm going you know I'm, I'm glad that my wife doesn't doesn't watch this because my <laughs> wife is an orchestra person my wife plays violin and, and does it very well um my wife is also a drummer so that worked out pretty oh well. Uh, uh, not the one who told me to go to the orchestra that my wife, right, was, right. yeah, we didn't meet till we, you know, we're from different States, but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I learned last week, those who didn't see the show last week, I, I learned that I gotta be really careful because apparently, uh, at some points, my wife can actually hear what I'm saying. And, and I, I don't think she thought we were live last week. Uh, I think she thought John and I were just talking before the show as we often do. And uh, I said something somewhat objectionable, and she came in to uh, <laughs> uh, address it. So, viewers, if you haven't seen last week's show, it's a riot. If you wanna, if you wanna, uh, yeah. Anyway, so Mrs. Stowe is awesome, and we love her. And and you know, she she's, is. She's she, allowed to. She's allowed to crash this show anytime I'm in here that she, she wants. You don't have to. You don't have to suck up to her. You're in Pennsylvania. She's a long. She's not coming to Pennsylvania. You know. Yeah. It's still, but you're right. Like she is. She is really an extraordinary woman. I mean, it takes a special, special woman to be married to me. I think it takes a special woman to be married to anybody in this industry. You know, it's uh, the, the long hours and the travel and the irregular hours. And uh, I just was very recently uh, um, very honored to be on a podcast uh, that a friend of mine who's a Grammy, nom- Grammy nominated uh, singer songwriter I've worked with is a part of. And she said, would you please be on my podcast? And I said, yeah. Um, and they were asking about you know, office hours, you know, and they said, is it a nine to five? And I said, well, there's two nines and two fives on the clock. So you're going to hit one of them at some point, you know, that's our job. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? I, I think there's, there's a few people that want to know about something related to some letters. I think it was run DMC or something. Maybe that's a, Someone you know what? Talking to Great. Great band. First CD I ever had, actually. I, really? I, <clears throat> now, the first CD I bought uh, was Def Leppard Hysteria, but the first okay. CD I ever had was Run DMC. Uh, and it was uh, a funny story because the CD player that we bought was a demo unit from the store because uh, it was it was cheaper anyway, you know, and it, and it came with that CD in it. And we called the store and they're like, I nah, just keep it. So it was fantastic. There you go. I will say this before we actually get on to topic. I, I had a school dance last week. Played it's tricky. These are high school kids, six to twelve. They were singing it like like you would have thought it was the hottest song they ever heard. I and mean, I was, honestly, I was, you know, good impressed. music never goes out of style. You know, no, but to to those below the age of eighteen, that can be questionable. 
<laughs> well, but, yeah, but, you know. maybe they don't know what style is, you know. I exactly. Mean, they, they're still learning. They don't even know how to take a shower, half of them. So, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I coached high school wrestling. It just, I, that just brought back so many. Yeah. I was like, oh. sorry, I'm sorry. Your, your nose just smelled things that shouldn't. traumatized the PTSD. Yeah. You know what? I threatened them with Mrs. Stowe. It's, I said, look, if I get infantigo or some skin disease, cause you guys don't take a shower. I said, my wife's going to come in here and murder all of you. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, so initials, I think we're supposed to be talking about DMX. Oh, oh, I, that, that, you know, I teach math. I forget how to spell. So words is hard, Dan. Words is hard. It is. I don't word good. Don't give your kids word problems then. No. Syntax no. matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. But supposedly like to, in all seriousness, though, with, with DMX, right? So it seems like lately there's been a lot of you kind of, for lack of better terms, drifting away from the old tried and true cables now obviously there's places where the cables will always be the cables and there's certain scenarios obviously where the cables are always 100 percent necessary they however pretty much 100 percent of the time right but however we're kind of going to talk more a little bit wire, about wireless dmx is, is my mm -hmm. understanding here so within that let's let's assume for a second i say ben i i need to get started um i i, I don't know where to begin i don't know where to begin in this process where where would we where would be where that where would we start well the first thing i would ask you dan is do you have any fixtures that have wireless dmx on board currently because many fixtures now do come with some form of wireless dmx built in uh and and what the fixture it is will probably determine what the wireless dmx is you know and and um when I say what the wireless DMX is, that's because there's not a standard. Unlike DMX, which is a standard, and that was the whole point of creating DMX back in 1991, was that we'd have a universal standard to control lights. Uh, wireless DMX uses individual and proprietary protocols. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you'll find like, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Chevet DeFi, you know, uh, will only talk to other Chevet DeFi wireless uh, protocols. Or you maybe find like an open source 2.4 gigahertz, you know, and that will talk to other compatible uh, fixtures, you know, whereas in the uh, professional production world, we often find WDMX, which is, again, proprietary, but licensed by wireless solutions. So, you know, uh, many of my um, touring class moving heads have WDMX built in. My, my phaser has WDMX built in. And even though they're different brands, they will talk because the common link is WDMX. Um, Chevet well sticks uh, use WDMX so you can get any compatible any WDMX transmitter would be compatible and you could talk to it. So I think that's the first question is do you have anything that already has has wireless DMX on board and if so what because we maybe want to stick within that ecosystem, but if you find yourself in the unique scenario where you're like yes I do. But maybe I've got well sticks and maybe I've got you know Chevet DeFi and even though they're both Chevet devices. They're not speaking the same language. What do I do? So then we have to kind of go down that road and figure out, you know, what's the uh, best way to, to, you know, make that work. And in some cases, it means having two transmitters. Um, and then uh, something we can dive into here in a little bit, which is really, really cool, actually, is um, the Chevet ILS, uh, the, the, you know, their new intelligent lighting uh, system. Uh, people often think about that as a wireless protocol, but it is not. It is a control protocol separate from DMX. We'll dive into that in a little bit, maybe, and and uh, talk about that. Okay. So, so definitely, definitely, the first thing anybody needs to figure out is if you're going to go this route, what are you working with? Yeah, um, and I think too. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but on that point too, is fun. is uh, not only what fixtures do you have, but what do you want to do? You know, if you're like, mm -hmm. hey, I want this to work hundreds of feet away, rock solid. I'm going to say, OK, then the open source is not your thing. WDMX is the way to go. It uses advanced frequency hopping spread spectrum. It, it tends to be the most robust and reliable. You know, I've, I've seen it reliably work at 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet, you know. Um, so that's the second part of that equation. Sorry to interrupt you. But you know what? While you talk, I'm going to have some pie. All right. So, Ben, here's the question as, as you're having your pie, because I think I saw the kind that is. Do you have a favorite flavor? A favorite choice to go to? Mm. 
There aren't too many I don't like. Um, <laughs> the favorite, I think. Um, sorry, I just couldn't look at your pie shirt anymore, and it's making me hungry. So sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, you're, you're a terrible influence on me. It's actually got the digits of pie. It's harder to see. Oh wow! Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I only know uh, three point one four one five nine two six five three nine five eight nine. I think. You should have had it. I could have checked. 3.1415926539. Nope. Nope. Five three five. Yeah, five three eight, five. Nine, Sorry, seven. five three five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <sighs> back to work. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> there, there went your career in NASA. In NASA. Yeah. But mm. side note here, and I shared this with you before, but for everybody else, found out that NASA only uses 14 digits of pi for their calculations of millions and millions of miles of everything else. 14 digits of pi gets them down to a half of an inch being accurate. So, so we don't need to know 100 we're digits custom of pi. panels. If we go eight digits, that's accurate enough. Okay, got it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> good to know. We're accurate to the, you know, millionth of an inch. Um, yeah, no, I forgot. Oh, pay favorite pie. Yeah, I was like, I forgot, to go ahead. I forgot the question. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's somewhat seasonal too, right? Like you can never really go wrong with an apple pie. Uh, I love cherry pie. I love peach pie. I like cream pies though too. Banana, uh, coconut. Um, I think probably the only one I, I don't like is pecan. And don't ask me why. I don't know why. Because I like pecans. I just don't like pecan pie. Okay. Right. Pretty much anything goes. Pumpkin, of course, around the holidays. That's a must. You know, I mean, it just... Hmm. I, I'm with you on the pecan though. I I can't any anything is nuts. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah, I don't know. It. Just it's weird. I don't know what it is. It's just I mean, like I said, pretty much anything, anything else I'll eat it. I mean, uh, there's a few legendary trips to. Uh, there's a, a a restaurant not far from the. Uh, uh, well, actually, it's it's right by when Mobile Beat was at the uh, was at the Trop. There was like a pie shop just a block and a half over, and we made a lot of late night runs over there to get pie. So. <laughs> I mean, that's I I'll try that one. <laughs> that's how I party in Vegas. You know, everybody else is going out <laughs> to the clubs. And I'm like getting some pie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And probably a little bit cheaper than that drink at that, you know, water that would have been at the, <laughs> the club. No doubt. Um, oh my. What's your favorite? What's your favorite kind of pie, Dan? I, I am an apple pie. That that is my go to. It has to have cinnamon in it to to really kind of make it off now, the top. Standard apple pie with, or like a Dutch with, apple pie. And now you're getting technical on me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I prefer more of the crumb. I, I know my prize. Yeah, I perform. I prefer more like the crumb crust than than like the straight crust. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I, and I have some fun like memories. Cinnamon too. ice cream, like warmed up with some cinnamon ice cream. Oh, mm, there we go. That's so good. There we go. I teach my kids how to remember mode. By saying that I like the ice cream more than the pie. So I want as much of the mode in pie of mode as I can. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I'm going to lean more to the ice cream than I am the pie. But yeah, apple, apple is the one that would be my one go to. First time viewers are like, what in the world are we watching? <laughs> like, what is we're learning about something with DJ? What they keep talking food and, you know, yeah. This is what you get. Like, you know, you think you're going to get the, no, no, we're, we're going to sprinkle. Like we're said sp- last week, it's a free show, no refunds. So, you yeah. Know. <laughs> you don't well, if all we did was talk technical jargon the whole night, like they'd be, they'd be glassed over and, and some of them, not, not others. Like I, there's, I'm looking at some of the names in the chat and definitely want to thank uh, DJ Mikey Mike and Aaron, the DJ and, and Simeon for, for checking us out tonight as well as anybody else that might be um out in facebook land i can only see the names and you know what let's find out in case we make some more late night uh, vegas pie runs but uh viewers put your favorite pie in the comments there we go i I, want to know i want to see who's uh who's got what so i'll see if you're going with me or not (laughs) (laughs) chocolate peanut butter pie there we go there's another one that a little unusual like off you know it's not doesn't quite fit into that fruit piece that a lot of pies do but oh i'd do it though i'd do it absolutely yeah 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 it takes them a while. There's like 30 seconds of delay. So we'll be moving <coughs> oh, on to the okay. next thing. Then they'll suddenly answer it. Pi DMX, somebody says. Yeah, Pi DMX. Yeah, they're like, I think that's a subtle hint. Get back on topic. <laughs> <laughs> Booked oh, my whole my Tuesday God. around hearing this show about DMX, and all I'm doing is learning about pie. Coconut custard. They're, they're, they're starting to come in. Coconut custard. We've got really don't have a favorite. They love them all. Um, Who's so, out? Yeah. I'm going with them. 
Uh, that would be Nathan. Nathan. It's a date. Rath- All right. Rathmeyer. Rathmeyer. I totally oh, forgot yeah, yeah. name, my, buddy. I'm sorry. A, yep. My guy in uh, Alabama, I think. Okay. All righty. John Colley, DMX, easy as PI. <laughs> Love John. Thanks for that. <laughs> a- ABC so. Pi. Apple. Oh, Appleberry Cherry. That's what ABC stands for. Apple oh, Appleberry Cherry. That's, sure. that's a complex buy right there. You know, how is it they're making me hungry while I'm eating a pie? <laughs> like, I'm literally eating a pie right now and I'm thinking about pie. They're thinking about more pieces that you could have. There's yeah, more in the see. kitchen. A couple different flavors out there. I, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't mess around on pie day. No, no. Nor should you ever. ever. No, there are some things that are just, you know, sacred. So, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's get back to the DMX. So we talked about we talked about figuring out some of the fixtures and, and that kind of thing. And, and so, so to put it in some perspective here, when you talk open source, like if somebody's not familiar with what that means, mm-hmm. is is that just is that is their brand? I mean, I see, I hear the word open source. It makes me think of like open source code, like it's available it to anybody. Yeah. It's kind of is. And again, it's it's still proprietary proprietary ish but you'll find it uh you know in like eternal uh, lighting used it and some of the the no name chinese lights use it you know because again it's it's an open source communications now eternal also allows you to get wdmx on board their fixtures so again you kind of got their choice you know um yeah, there's just, it, it's sort of the generic, if you will, but that doesn't mean that just because you bought two, we'll just say two Chinese uplights that they're going to work together. It doesn't mean that's going to be the case, you know? Yeah, they, they very well might be on a on a different setup within that. Like one might have this version, now one might have that version. Well, that's the step too. Even within the uh, open source, we found some, some uh, we'll call it software versions, I guess, but some, you know, for whatever reason, it'll it'll work intermittently or it doesn't work reliably or you know it, it doesn't work like it should and um as part of the the sound and lighting symposium i've i've taken a spectrum analyzer analyzer actually and uh measured what's happening when these uh dmx um, devices are communicating i think that's really kind of an eye opener too people are like wow you can you know sort of visualize the radio waves as it were <coughs> i apologize again <coughs> Uh, I got a pie in my throat. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, uh, you sort of see what's happening with these, um, you know, signal transmissions. And I think that helps to kind of understand, okay, this is how it's, you know, 2.4 is not 2.4 is not 2.4. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Wi-Fi is 2.4. And even within Wi-Fi, we have lots of different standards, right? You know, 802.11a, 802.11b, going back, you know, ancient times, 802.11ac, you know, a little bit more modern, right? So, you know, these are somewhat intracompatible uh, Wi-Fi standards, you know, but uh, then we have Bluetooth, which is also 2.4 gigahertz, and it's not going to communicate with it at all. You know, they're, they're very different standards just because they're sharing a, a, um, a frequency range, right? So. Okay. So, so let's assume for a second that I'm not using um, some off-brand from another group. Like I, I've got, I've got Chavez DiFi and, um, let, let's say I have an, an ADJ fixture over here. Um, I'm blanking. What's the name of it? Um, Wi-Fi? ADJ's Wi-Fi? Thank you. Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So they have a, we have a Wi-Fi compatible fi- fixture over here. I, I, I don't really, you know, I've got two. Yeah, they won't so, talk to each other. So either, right. either you're going to have to get some compatible receivers to use with one. You're going to turn off the radio on one of them and you're going to get receivers for them. You know, and and each of these has uh, receivers available. Chevet's got their little DeFi dongles, and you can just plug it into a light. It's battery powered, very convenient, right? You know, uh, uh, ADJ's got their EXR Wi-Fi, and the, the, you know, so whatever your best option is, that's you know what you would make the prevailing wireless, and then you just turn off the radios on the ones that you're not going to use, um, so that it's receiving only on the compatible or you get two transmitters and you're transmitting two simultaneous wireless networks and and ensuring that they're not competing with each other for airspace. And usually you can, uh, just like you would with a wireless mic, you can kind of pick a frequency, you know? Do you, so, so I guess in that instance, then I'm not stuck, 
right? I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily have to buy the two fixtures because those are two, uh, two transmitters. So like, let's assume for a second, I bought them. I wasn't planning on doing wireless. Now I'm deciding to get into it. And suddenly I go, uh Oh, they're not compatible. There is that third tool, if you will, to plug into them um, Mm -hmm. and do that, which, so is that, is something like that I'm assuming would also be able to take my non wireless DMX fixture and make it. Yeah, which is really what it was intended for. I mean, that's obviously the intended purpose is to make something that's not wireless now uh, wireless, but you can also use it to convert something that uh, isn't compatible uh, into something that is. Uh, you know, engineering is a series of compromises, and uh, it's, uh, you know, how we go about it is, is, is almost an individual discussion. You know, I have these conversations with people in, you know, in the real world, you know, and, and, and you being a great customer yourself, you know, will call up and say, so here's what I want to do. And we say, okay, well, here's how you're going to do it, you know, or here's what I would propose you do, right? Um, but there isn't always a uh, right or wrong or hard and fast answers, you know, and I think sometimes customers maybe wish I would give straighter answers, but many times my answers are questions, you know, mm-hmm. uh, is, is ultimately you're the one who's going to use the gear. So I want to make sure we get to a place that works for you. Um, uh, I mean, I guess it would make it much easier if everybody would just do things my way, but, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to just impose my, you know, way on everybody because it isn't really always the right way. I, I still, it, it's funny you mentioned about like, I want to do this. I still remember, and, and I don't know if you remember this or not, you, you, the memory you have, you probably do, but, um, oh my gosh, this has been, this has been a few years. This is, this is going back a few years, maybe almost 10 at this point. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to be able to have a trussing with mm-hmm. moving heads on top. And I wanted to be able to run wireless basically to them. But at that point, point those extra dongle pieces um for plugging in were harder to come by or you still had to plug them in they weren't really battery powered or if they were i didn't know about them yep um so we kind of had to figure something out and through you and i kind of thinking through it we got the idea of i I was using my eternals which had a dmx out Mm -hmm. so i sent my signal to my uplight in the bottom of my truss and then ran a cable up to up to my up to my moving heads and that that alone just made me go oh this this isn't as nasty as i'm thinking it's gonna be no that makes perfect sense and that's something i would suggest even today you know why get another receiver why spend the extra money and deal with the extra you know effort to to get a receiver for your moving light if it doesn't have it built in when six feet away or eight feet away you've got a wireless receiver and the output of that wireless receiver is a DMX bus. We can now connect a wired string of fixtures up to 31 fixtures you know, in the bus. And uh, it's just the same as if it came out of a controller. So that can be a really great way. Um, you know, we talk about like DMX splitters too. You know, well, wireless receivers can function basically like splitters. If you have two receivers, you now have a splitter uh, basically, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I think that's a that's a, a great way to understand that the wireless and the wired DMX is ultimately the same. Once it comes out of that wireless receiver, it's DMX, and uh, we can use it any way we want. We can put a wireless receiver on a truss and have a whole horizontal truss full of lights cabled to that one receiver. Okay. So, what you know? Let's say let's say I've got my transmitter right, mm-hmm. and I've got this set up. Um, you know, with microphones, we talk about, you know, when, when we have a handheld receiver and stuff like that, we got the antennas, or I'm sorry, handheld transmitter, and we've got the, we got the antennas on the receiver, and we talk about, you know, line of sight and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I assume there's some of that same issue because we're still dealing with radio waves, right? Like, the, is there, is there a better, is it better for the transmitter to be high or for the receiver to be high? It was better if I'm for setting this high. <laughs> for them both to be high. Okay. You know, I mean, because line of sight is the is the name of the game. Now we're talking about, you know, 2.4 is a much smaller wavelength than most of our wireless mics, which operate typically in UHF 470 to 614, you know, minus 608 to 614, but it's 616, you know, we'll just call it 608. That little two megahertz slice nobody ever really uses <laughs> anymore anyway. So, you know, uh, but uh yeah, so you know, two point four is a much smaller wavelength. Uh, it's going to have uh, much less ability to uh, to penetrate things, um, you know, and it's going to not 
propagate as well through water or metal, uh, you know, a, a, a metal mesh where the where the gaps in the metal are smaller than the length, the wavelength of the radio wave are essentially a solid surface as far as that radio wave is concerned. So, you know, they don't propagate well through that. Um, so, yeah, I think that, in, you know, obviously it's not practical to have line of sight when you've got uplights against a wall. Uh, you know, you're going to have people around and, and the systems are somewhat engineered with that in mind. And these, these you know, radio waves will bounce around a little bit. But if you want, yeah, a clear propagation, that's the best way to do it is to make sure that there's nothing between the two transmit and receive. Um, and, and here again, something... just to, just, just to right. add before you, before you ask that is to say that, you know, the different signal topologies, uh, WDMX is much better. Uh, and one of the reasons is the, the fact that it spreads its data out so much over the whole spectrum, uh, that advanced frequency hopping spread spectrum. So any lost bits are happening at a faster rate than DMX refreshes, and thus you don't experience any jitters or lost data in the DMX signal. Okay, so that's why that's why you're getting about the fact that that has that better mm -hmm. that better piece because of how it how it goes out. Yeah, you mentioned about not difference. you mentioned about not being penetrating. Does to just to make sure I'm understanding that does that mean things where a microphone we don't really notice an issue DMX if you put them in the exact same conditions you might have an issue due to that lack of penetration. So. So mm -hmm. that's something to think about, like, so, because I could see some people go, well, I've got the two of them side, you know, maybe not side by side, but I've got them. Yeah, don't do that. Don't put them side by side, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But if I, I, you know, I've got them in comparable locations, why is my mic going to be fine? But my, my wireless DMX is not. And, and so that kind of answers that. So when you're thinking about your placement, um, definitely want to keep those, keep that aspect to it or as, as we're kind of finding that if you want to just make sure that no trouble well, i shouldn't say no trouble the least opportunity for trouble mm -hmm. would be the would be that wdmx yeah it's it's you know i mean if you're going to go wireless i mean I, I, it's just it's the best one out there i think you know and certainly you know i haven't i haven't compared it uh in a head-to-head -head against things like goddard and city theatrical but you know the other pro level wireless is but it's Compared to like DeFi or Wi-Fi or any of that, I mean, it's not even close. It's it's like a, a you know a, a General Motors H3 versus an actual Hummer. You know, like you know, <laughs> one is truly weapons grade and the other one just looks like it. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, one you would actually take into you know those conditions and one you wouldn't. You know, um, but uh, th th something you said about the microphone, I want to go back to. That doesn't mean that your mic will work when the DMX won't. Uh, sometimes you find the opposite, even though the mic probably, uh, well, certainly has a longer wavelength and is able to penetrate more. There's other problems that mics experience. And one of those is that audio is real time. And uh, there's no chance for a do over and any dropped, you know, information, whether it's digital or analog, we perceive immediately. We hear it and we go, that's not right. Uh, whereas DMX is fairly slow on its refresh rate and, uh, you know, intermittent interference maybe cause a light to blink or something. And it's just not quite as annoying as a mic drop, you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not good, but I think that mics are held to a much higher standard and it's also a much more difficult signal to propagate. DMX is a fairly low data signal. You know, when you think about like, uh, let's talk for a second about DMX over ethernet, something like artnet, for example, when you take Ethernet speeds, and we're not even talking about gigabit, by the way, we're talking about old Ether Ethernet speeds, you can still fit 37,000 DMX universes onto that Cat5. So gives you a sense that, you know, I mean, audio is just much more of a priority signal, I think, you know, it, it's, it's harder to propagate it without any noticeable artifact, whereas wireless DMX is less vulnerable, maybe, you know. And I know, and a lot, and another thing that probably would inter, inhibit us from probably seeing even that issue is that a lot. I've noticed a lot of the fixtures kind of have a if I drop signal, I'm just going to keep doing what I was doing type mm -hmm. of thing. Like I'm not going to suddenly like go. I'm not going to go black out on you. I'm not going to die on you. I'm just going to keep doing what I was doing. So sometimes we don't even notice it from that standpoint. Like I know with the uplates that I have, it, you know, there's been times where I've, you know, I was like. Like I noticed that it was off in the sequence of what was going on with the with the pattern, but 
but it was only that it was, they were still like there. So I was like, okay. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. I'm actually going to try to really quickly pull up the uh, user's manual for uh, uh, one of the moving lights that I use because it actually has that feature built in where uh, you can choose, you can say, you know, so what happens when I lose DMX? Uh, what do you do? You know, so let's see, uh, loss of data, page 22. Look at that. So, um, let me do a quick screen share here. And we can see right here, loss of data. So it says to set how the product reacts to a loss in control signal or signal data. And it says, you know, uh, you know, you can hold your last signal, just do what you were doing. Uh, or you can, you know, black out, you know, so uh, some fixtures give you that option to say, what do you do if you lose signal, you know, what's less objectionable, I guess. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, that, that's nice to have that, to have that option. Um, just because I mean, things happen, right? E even even the best plans that we might have, you know, there, there's always that potential for failure in some form or fashion. So um, it's just trying to reduce that as much as possible. Um, so somebody asked a question here and, and maybe you can share on this and maybe not. Um, but Simeon had, asked, had said, I need help with my Wellstick 180. Is the Wellcom coming out anytime soon? Yes, and I guess this week. They're arriving this week. Okay, so we don't even have to ask this follow-up question. Yeah, so he, uh, well, you, you, I guess, yeah, I guess I don't know what the follow-up question is, but Simeon, I love Simeon, by the way, uh, good guy. Um, the reason we haven't told anybody yet is because I, I very, very much, I've been very active in my opinions on the software for the Wellcom, and I very, very much want to get my hands on one and go through it before we tell everybody they're here. Uh, because I really want to know that when we say they're here and the software is what we hoped it would be, what I don't want is for people to get excited that they're here, order them up, and then be disappointed. You know, I'd much rather deal with what do we do with these, you know, 40 Wellcoms we've got in stock, uh, you know, if there's a software update coming or something. So short answer is we should be seeing those very, very soon. Uh, they are, um, I think, on the way. I think the, the, they, they've shipped. Uh, I know they're available to ship, and I think they are on the way to us and arriving this week. But I want to play with one um, and just have a comfort level that it's going to address the things that Simeon and others have asked for with the well sticks. Uh, so there's. The, so what's the follow-up question? I'm just curious. <laughs> the follow-up question was, was, I think, if this is not the case, would there be a similar substitute that you might recommend um, I think to, to tide over, but if they're coming, that's a great question. No, I don't think tiding over is even the 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 thing. I think that uh, it's a great question because the Wellcom does one thing, which is basically turns your phone into a DMX controller, uh, which is very cool. And and again, I've seen some of the software in beta and whatnot. I just want to see the final thing and you know uh, feel good about that. But um, yeah, because you could use any WDMX transmitter, and now you could use Show Express or your Kansas or Sound Switch or at this point now we're back to the realm of universal you could use any dmx controller to control your well sticks so i think it's go. a great follow-up question because you have both options and you know uh th there's possibly scenarios where you would even own both you know i want simple and i want to run it from my phone you know boop, boop, boop. or i want to do something purposeful uh, that's outside of the constraints of what the Wellcom software will do or won't do. We don't know yet, but you know, so anyway, stay tuned. There we go. There we go. You, you made Simeon very happy. There's, there's a lot of surprise faces and a, and a big old yes. So I think he's, he's very happy to hear um, that update. So well, let me say this for any of those surprised and happy faces out there besides his, uh, we don't have that many Wellcoms. So if you want to reserve one, pending my testing, you can do that with no obligation. You can say, I want to reserve one, but I'm, I'm not going to order. I'm not going to buy it until Ben says he likes it or doesn't. Uh, you can make that reservation and get your name on the list because when these are gone, they're going to be gone again for a while, I'm afraid. So still a chip shortage and it still sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's is to what it is. So, so, that brings up a question then, you know, because obviously there, there's that issue there. Is there a 
Is there an issue with certain wireless DMX options that are a little bit harder to come by because of, of you know, the current situation? Um, They've all been kind of a challenge. I mean, you know, we're okay. pretty well stocked now on like, we've got really good stock on the DeFi kits. Um, WDMX had been very hard for a while because they end of life, the generation five, and they've just come out with their G6, which in addition to the Wellcom software was also one of the things that held back the Wellcom because it uses WDMX. So they're waiting on chips for that too, you know? So uh, that was very frustrating. I mean, I, we were we were in uh, weekly contact with Sweden where they're made and, in, in, you know, almost starting like an international incident, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, get these things over here, you know, yeah. so. Well, that's that's good. So, so you know, obviously things happen, and and that is what it is. But for lack of better terms, some light towards the end of the tunnel. No pun intended. Since we're talking DMX, that was good. That was really good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I try. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes they're they're a little easier than others. You know, for this pun. Yeah. This morning, I ended a meeting with uh, several of our department heads by saying we would all be on the same sheet of music, and everybody kind of groaned. But I'm like, hey, that's. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> Um, and the pun right, was so, absolutely intended too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And if it's not, you still say it is because then they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> go for that. So that's right. Um, I did not raise three kids to not have the privilege of using dad jokes. Dad that jokes is, are that they're they're imperative. You, you got it. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're your dad or if you're a mom. The cornier, the better. The joke that you have, the more you can get somebody to roll their eyes, the better. Um, and and yeah. That that is that is key to anything, and yeah. And Sorry, that that, that got me happy. thinking of of Dana for a moment. So, well, yeah. yeah. Mondays are well. Much is not the same without Dano. That's for sure. Nothing in the industry will ever be the same. I think without Dano and Neil and Raymar and so many of the great personalities that we've lost, the great friends that that we've lost. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, not to get you know deeply personal on this, but you know, obviously Neil McKinney and I were very close friends, and Dano and I both spoke at Neil's funeral, and uh, it was very shortly after that that Dano also passed, and that uh, really it opened up the other wound with Neil, but it also really hurt because I had just seen him, you know, mm -hmm. and we had just talked about the things we were going to do, and. And I know a lot of people love Dano, and I think that speaks to who he was and, and, you know, I mean, as a person, not just as an entertainer, not just as a performer, but who he was in the industry. Mm -hmm. And it got me uh, actually thinking, you know, I mean, everybody was wearing disco balls. I wore one certainly at, at, at MEX and, you know, it was sort of a conversation. I don't know if, if uh, I don't think she'll mind if I, you know, say this, but, you know, our, our mutual friend, Rachel Lynch, and I were talking uh, because she was also close with Dano and we were really just kind of processing this together, you know, just a flurry of text messages back and forth and some tear, teary eyed phone calls. And, um, and uh, I sort of mused, I said, do you ever wonder what your legacy would be? You know, and she, she, she laughed through tears, but she said probably pizza, you know, but, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, we, really you think about that, like, what are we, you know, we, you know, what are we really doing? Right. You know, so. Um, I told her, I said, well, at least you'll have one. I don't know what mine would be, but. Uh, <laughs> I think you, I think it, it depends. In your words, it depends. It depends, um, yeah. <laughs> it, it depends. On, it depends on which circle of, of those people that that are are close to you and and know you, um, because you've got so many. Uh, a lot of people think of you as just like this guy that they get gear from, and and yet those who start to know you and get to know you recognize that you are extremely multifaceted, and you have so many different layers of of direction that you're involved in. Um, that I think your legacy will be dependent upon who that person is and, and that, and that experience they have. I think we're all complex beings though. You know, you're a math teacher, but that's not who you are. You know, that's one of the things that you do. And certainly I know you as a friend and as an individual, and I know that, that I think most of us are like that though. I think most mm -hmm. of us are not just the one thing. And, um, yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, I, I, it was just an interesting introspective, you know, where we thought about, you know, where these, these people, we knew these friends, these, um, forces in the industry that now we feel there's a, a bit of an emptiness there's a bit of a vacuum you know uh certainly my graphics for this show has never been the same since jimmy de palma passed away you know and uh i mean uh not that you know that's 
that's Jimmy's legacy, but it's just one of the things he was just so extraordinarily good at, right? Uh, so yeah, I think all of us are, uh, I, you know, it's interesting you say, I'm sort of fumbling for a point, but you know, yeah, I, I love that I can help people with gear and I love that I can help people with their gear questions, but to your point, I'm also a human, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a, a father, a husband, a, you know, sports fan. I mean, you know, pick, I'm a, we're all a lot of things. Right. And I, and that's one of the things I've valued the most is the human connection of the last 30 years in the industry. Uh, and, and hopefully my next 30, you know, but mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed getting to know the people, not, not just their gear, although I probably do know their gear. <laughs> <laughs> just in there. Just in there. <laughs> well, we are we are coming down towards the end. So so in in the time that we've got here remaining, um, what I'd like to kind of pose is, you know, we, we've talked about some of those those entry points and those pieces that you have, and obviously what you get depends upon uh, what you have. Um, so is there is there any kind of make sure you think of this type of type of type of last nugget to throw in there i guess i would say understand your application and ask the questions before you buy the gear uh i can't tell you how many times i see it on forums or even people will message me and say so i just bought this what do you think of that I'm like well, i think you just bought it that's what i think you know especially if you just bought it from somebody else what do you want me to do about it you know like <laughs> You know, it's not even the, I don't even have the option of saying, of putting a pause on your order, you know, is saying, well, let's yeah. talk about it before it goes, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it's, are you seeking validation at that point? Or you just want to pat on the back saying you did good, or do you really want my answer? Cause you might not like it. You know, it puts me in a very tough spot because I'm, I'm so committed to integrity, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing. And I, I don't know, I guess, like I said, understand the application and, 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 you know, then we're going to talk through those other things. Do you have something that's already wireless? You know, what are you trying to accomplish? What do you want to do? Why do you want to go wireless? I mean, I get it. You know, I mean, no strings is convenient, right? I mean, I saw Pinocchio, like four versions of it, you know, but, uh, you know, but sometimes wired is better, you know, uh, but, but I use wireless frequently too. So anyway, so that's a really complicated, it depends kind of answer, right? You know? Something you hit in the beginning that we got we got to circle back to before we run out of time. You brought up about the ILS mm -hmm. and and how that's not a, a why it's not a wireless DMX type of situation. It's more software. So what are we dealing with for that? Like I mean these these fixtures. What are you sending to one? Is it doing everything for you? Do you need the extra pieces? I oh, look I, at that. He's got a graphic. <laughs> I put together a couple graphics. Yeah. So if my friends from, uh, from Chevy are watching, you're welcome. So, <clears throat> you know, I'll say this, um, I'm proud to be a, a, a Chevy dealer and I'm proud that dental effects has won, uh, three Chevy dealer of the year awards, but I'm not a paid influencer. I'm not getting any extra whatever for doing this. So, uh, but I will also say, uh, Albert Chevy, if you're watching, I'm not opposed to it. So, you know, I mean, you, you know, cash at me, uh, <laughs> you won't. All right. So anyway, no, I, I think we have a, a great relationship with Chevet and I think they've come out with something really pretty cool here. And, and the whole concept is that it starts with the gig bar move ILS. And right now that's the only way that this, this starts, but within the gig bar move ILS, which is what you see on your screen, um, you have basically the brains of a lighting controller uh something that's designed to basically run the lighting for you and and there's some really fantastic control options you have up to 50 channels of dmx control within this thing too which is pretty cool uh but you also have this remote and it's about time that they did this by the way uh which is my annotation tool here uh so this remote down here is rf you can see this tiny little divot here well that's an antenna that would stick out um and uh well, it's about time because now you don't have to actually just point it at the thing, you know, you can you, you can use it and it'll transmit the signal via radio wave. Um, but fixture this is like the uh, the brains of the operation, as it were. And uh, then you've got these other ILS fixtures and there are many available right now and many more coming. Uh, I've been privy to some of the behind the scenes stuff and it's pretty wild. I actually cost myself a sale today because somebody asked me about something and I said, yeah, just wait a month. <laughs> just, just, 
just cool it for a month. Why? Can't tell you. Just take my word for it or don't. Your choice. Uh, you know. Anyway, so what we can see, these are ILS enabled fixtures. And, you know, here we have a, a, a like, you know, a wash a similar to a par. Here we have a moving head. And here we have kind of a party in a box. You know, we've got, uh, bring up my annotation tool again here. You know, we've got these uh, color mixing elements. We've got effect light things coming out of here. We've got a laser in the middle. These are like all strobes. Uh, you know, so this thing does a whole bunch of different things. And what's really cool is that all of this is now uh, working together. So when the strobes up here go off, the strobes here go off, you know? Um, when the moving head does something, the moving head here does something, and you can tell it where these are relationally, fixture one, two, three, or four, so it knows where you want it to respond. So you can have some cool kind of complementary crossing beams, things like that, things that it really looks like you spent some time on your light show. You know, when the wash lights are doing something, then the wash lights are doing something. You know, when the effect lights are doing something, then the effect lights are doing something. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you've got your, your laser. And it's nice, too, because you say, well, I, I don't want a laser going during my first dance or my wedding. You've got some ability to control that. And, and they keep updating the firmware, actually, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a new version of the firmware out. You can stick a USB stick in the back of the gig bar move, and it updates the firmware, and you, you add functionality so you can, you know, get a little bit more specific and purposeful looks um, without actually having to use DMX or doing any programming. Now, I, I love DMX and I find it very easy, but I'm sure that probably got a bunch of groans and head slaps. So if DMX isn't your bag, this is. This is a pretty cool thing. It's very easy to use. Um, so how this works basically is we've got our effect light <clears throat> or, or any light, our moving head or any of these. There's a lot of them, you know, and uh, we have a couple different options. You can see that we uh, we have DMX on board here. And we also have this USB port. Now, this is different than the USB port on the gig bar move. This is only for uh, Chauvet's DeFi USB. It's just a small wireless USB uh, uh, powered um, DMX receiver. So maybe a picture will help. Let's let's try that. So here we can see there's my my USB powered um, wireless DMX receiver. I just plug it into this port or I could take a wireless DMX receiver of any kind or a DMX cable and plug it into here. Now, where this is, is keyly different from wireless DMX is that ILS is either wired or wireless. There is a wireless transmitter built into the gig bar move, but there is not in these fixtures. So in order to use that with the fixtures, you would need to run a DMX cable uh, but you can also use the built-in wireless with the wireless DMX receivers to transmit ILS. So they're complementary but different, if that makes sense. So, so when you see the ILS on those other fixtures, not on the gig bar, but on those other fixtures, mm -hmm. it has the capability of taking the thinking that's being sent it and knows what to do with it, not entirely wireless standalone type of thing now just out of curiosity with with those fixtures that are built into this do they come with a receiver they do to, not they do not okay so that's something that's something use, that obviously you want to know about if you're going to go that route so yeah you would have to use the chevet d5 compatible receivers there's a couple different options three i think to be exact uh but you could also use a cable but it's important to note that the ILS is only available on ILS compatible fixtures. If you have a non ILS enabled Chevet moving head, that's not going to work with the ILS. Or if you have another brand, that's not going to work. You have to have the ILS enabled in order to use the ILS protocol. It is a patent pending proprietary standard that is different. And, and again, it's sort of a simplified way to run neat complex looking light shows without doing any programming. Uh, and if you want to learn more about ILS, please contact any of us here at NLFX. Uh, happy to talk to you about it. We demonstrated it at the MEX show. Uh, you know, so it is sort of a replacement for DMX in a simplified form, uh, but it does not replace DMX and what DMX can do, which is very individualized, specific, granular control capability. I think it's great that a lot of these, um, a lot of these brand companies are are, are trying to help 
for lack of a better term, someone like me <laughs> who has enough knowledge of DMX to, to make it do some things. But when it comes to making a complex show, I, it's going to spend me, it's going to take me way more time than, than what I really want to spend with it. So having well, it's maybe not like necessary, that, you know, if you're like, look, well, a rock yeah. school dance, I don't want to program the lights. I just want them to do something that sort of makes sense. ILS I think is a great way for you to achieve smart, cohesive, you know, looking shows without putting in all that time and effort. There we go. There we go. What? We're not going to see ILS at concerts, you know? I mean, those things yeah. are still going to be programmed. So everything's got its place, you know? Mm -hmm. And here again, just because I have ILS enabled fixtures doesn't mean I won't use DMX with them, right? I think having both options is really important. Now, yeah, we got a quick moment for this question. Um, because I suddenly it's like, it's good. you mentioned it has the, the DMX control, right? If mm -hmm. I DMX to the ILS gig bar, mm -hmm. And I connect it to ILS fixture, compatible fixture, right? I, I, I make it, if I control the one, will it think it to the other one? You know, if I tell, if I tell the moving head on the gig bar to do something, will it then tell the moving or the moving head that is the ILS fixture with all the connected pieces connected? Or do I, what, since I went DMX, do I have to do DMX to that? That's a really good question. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to look at the DMX profile on the gig bar move. And uh, I have not tried that. Let's just look together. Okay. Uh, it seems like a thing. And whatever the 10 o'clock show is, I'm sorry, guys, we're just, we're, we're talking good stuff here. And, and I posed a question and Ben went, I don't know. I think I just won like the award for tonight. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> well, uh, so like, like many people, um, you know, I don't know things, but uh, I'm going to find out. That's my thing. So, uh, all right. I, 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 maybe a better way to answer that question is I don't know yet. Okay. So let's all learn together. Let's call Jeff Short up right now. <laughs> he I'm probably kidding. would know. That's true. That's true. He might. He might. <clears throat> I would be disappointed if Jeff didn't know. Uh, all right. So let's go to the, um, you'll notice here, like I said, here's your different uh, DMX channels. Uh, let's go to the 50 channel and let's just see. Here we can see all of our control for the PARs. We might have to look actually at our, at our menu control. So here we can see we're getting into our, you know, automatic programs. Okay, DeFi transmit. But it sounds like it sounds like you can turn on the transmit. Yep. Yeah, you you would obviously want to be able to turn so, on your radio. Hmm. We, we this is this is something I think we we need to get some experimenting going. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, this is something cool too, by the way, this bind feature, this allows you to enable one remote to control that fixture. So you don't have to worry about accidental control. Uh, you can also mm -hmm. set, you can also make it a common. So you can say, hey, I want any remote to do it. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a cool thing. So, okay, so DeFi, DeFi channel. I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion that Probably not, because I have a feeling you're probably in ILS mode or DMX mode. Um, but I don't know. And I don't really see a clear answer here. Uh, oh, this is cool too, by the way. You can change, you know, depending on what the fixtures you're linking with it. You can tell your PARs that, you know, they're supposed to emulate, you know, if they're a hex, they could emulate a try. You know, that way you're not making colors on one light that the other light can't uh, match, which is pretty cool. And look at here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Sound lost. We can tell what to do if you lose the sound. So that's cool. Uh, like we were talking about with the data earlier, DMX. Uh, so, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I don't know. 
answer might be right in front of me, but that's not something I've tried. You know, we, we, we <laughs> well, we and, and I think it's that that idea might be a little bit different in out of the box thinking. I mean, in the same respect, like if you're if you're connecting to this, you know, why would you why would you necessarily? But in the same respect, if it works as a transmitter, like I, like I see an application for it, but I also see where it might not be something that would be um, explicitly maybe written into the manual just because it is a little different from that standpoint. Well, I would imagine you can certainly use the gig bar move ILS as your transmitter since it has a DFI tra a DFI transmit a transceiver in in um, you know on board. I would totally believe that you could use it to broadcast your wireless DMX. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know if it would do it via ILS. You know? Yeah, I'm just thinking like if I program that, if it would automatically then, like if I wanted the PAR to do a thing, if it would make the PAR do, you know, like we talked about the PARs or if the strobe didn't make the other strobe do its thing, like, you know, kind of that same idea or if it mm -hmm. is more working off the, the remote or slash foot switch option is what then makes it go yeah hmm. wow all right on that note i'm gonna have more pie <laughs> that sounds like a wonderful wonderful idea um so so hopefully you enjoyed yourself hopefully you got figured out a few things related to wireless dmx there's definitely some things that you want to want to consider but ideally if you are getting started and going down this path the, the first thing you need to begin it with is what are you using and what's your plan for it um, and then from there, talk to Ben or, or one of his crew and, and they will be able to set you up with the best piece that's going to fit with what you're trying to do for it. Um, assuming that is possible, right? You know, if, if my cockamamie idea, it's not possible, then they can't. But beyond that, they'd probably figure out another way to make it like that. So I'm sure there's ways. But Ben, thank you very much for tonight. Thank you for allowing me to join you on, on you know, Tuesday night. And John, I believe we'll be back next week um, for whatever might be in store for that. But in the meantime, any any party words? Go eat pie. Go eat pie. There we go. Have at it. Have yourself a great night. Thanks, everybody.